One of my first experiences with the Raptor is when I took it on a test drive right before I bought it. And the quickly realized that the way the suspension was set up wasn't exactly what I was looking for. The Ford engineers set up the suspension to give you an all around um, truck that you can drive on the road and off the road with some mild off-road abilities. When I started looking and researching for options for modifying the suspension on the truck, I realized that it's best to just replace all of it. So this suspension comprised of, you know, your upper lower control arms, you have coilover, well not really a coilover in the front from the stock, but for simplicity a coilover setup, rear springs and then shocks. What I ended up doing is to start, I replaced the front coilovers and the rear shocks first and right away with some custom tuned King 3.0s. The King 3.0s that I went and got a hold of were a, still a prototype, they're not ready to release, but they were custom tuned by Thurin Fabrication. Uh, he's a leader in tuning uh, Ram 2500s and 1500s, and he does some work also on the Chevy uh, 15 2500 platforms. I wanted something that I could drive with less floatability on the highway and a lot more off-road capabilities, so I got the, sh the shocks and the pullovers valved a lot heavier than you would find a King 3.0 uh, off the shelf if you were to get one. However, the King 3.0 OTS are very capable and at least 200% better than the suspension that you get on your Raptor. You can also get yourself a set of Fox 3.0s. They're a little different than King and they're made more OEM-like, so you're not getting a huge foreign feel when you put them on the truck. However, they're a vast improvement. You can also get those custom tuned and there are a lot of uh, shock tuner companies that will help you with that setup. You can also go a much bigger build and you can get more involved. However, one of the first things you want to think about if you want to improve the ride of your Raptor, start with the front. The front comes stock a little too soft, the rear of the truck is a little too stiff, so it causes some of that floaty feel on the highway. If you want to get rid of that and you want to start your build a little different than mine, if you're not ready to go full suspension replacement, you don't have to. You can start with the front and possibly replace your front springs with either a geyser option that offers you progressive springs or you can go with the iBox and they're linear. Why don't I let my friend Helio tell you more about that? Hey guys, Helio would keep it dirty off-road. Today we're talking Raptor suspension upgrades. There's uh, a box, a box, is that how you say it? E-box, A-box, I-box, I don't know. I-box and geyser off-road springs. They start at about $250 and go up to as high as $500. And in my opinion, they're gonna give you the best performance because you're not just taking those stock front springs and reusing them. Now, one thing you should know is that any kind of spring or collar upgrades in the front is really a cheat. You're basically preloading the suspension, you're preloading the shock so you can get a smoother ride off-road. And unfortunately, that also makes it stiffer and creates your, your ride to be a little bit harsher when you're on the street. So keep that in mind. My recommendation is going with the Geyser Off-Road Springs. It's a progressive spring rate that matches the factory. It keeps full suspension travel. A perch collar still has to deal with the stock springs that are just too soft. The Geyser Off-Road Springs really smooths your ride off-road. And in turn, for me especially, it's increased my confidence off-road while reducing damage. Another big benefit is it's avoiding the front end from bottoming out. I won't bottom out on jumps. It, it really protects the lower control arms. And you know, the other option which is a uh, iBox are really for street trucks they're too stiff it's a linear spring rather than a progressive and most of the guys that run those complain about it being too stiff both on the street and on dirt now let's go ahead and talk rear suspension now for the rear suspension you have two options right so devers are fixed you basically order a specific height that you want to run at they give you the option to run anywhere from staying in stock height all the way up to your heart's content right really they're really customizable and they're around the $1,300 range before shipping and taxes and install. They also give you the option to do HD versions if you want to carry more weight. Now, Devers does have a funky numbering system for their ordering, so hope this helps you guys out. Devers accounts for the factory block to be removed, so all the numbers are based on that. So here's a quick guide to help you guys out to figure out what Devers you should order. So if you want to go with the stock height, you want to go plus twos or on the HD side, HD plus ones. If you want to go one inch over stock, you want to go with the plus threes or HD plus two. 
two inches over stock plus four or HD plus three and so on and so forth. So you guys can kind of figure it out from there. Also make sure that you plan ahead if you're using a drop shackle. Count for the amount of drop that's gonna give you and order your, your springs accordingly. So as Helio explained very uh, elaboratively how the Deaver can be set up and the different options, he also mentioned why he didn't go with Icon. His setup is very specific for his needs. He hauls about 800 pounds of tools on the trails and he's all over the place and he really loves helping out off-roaders when they're on the run with him. For my setup, which you will be in the next episode, is I'm going with the Icon setup. I'll give you more details on that and more information and an installation video as well. But to give you a summary is, Icon also is adjustable, so you get an add -a leaf and you can place it in multiple locations on the spring set so you can adjust your load and your ride height. The Icons are really well made as well and they're a great option for you. And you can use them in multiple applications. There is a third option and we will be talking about it in the third part three of this uh, video series. We're going to actually display the finished product of one of our shop trucks that Tyson Caramaris drives and you're going to see a lot more setup and a lot more suspension uh, customization and it's going to show you if you want to go a lot further with your build what else you could do. And don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel. Also, I will put a link for our IG account. We put a lot of information on there as well. Stay tuned for more videos from us and we would love to see you again. Have a good one. Now, never, ever, ever put a lift kit on a Raptor. It's basically spoils the truck. First off, a Raptor with the lift kit just looks silly. It's not functional, it takes away all from the Raptor's performance, and it's not gonna last when you're going on the trails at 65 miles an hour. It's just gonna fall apart. So just don't do it. If you're looking for the best deals, I recommend you reach out to my friends out at Off-Road Alliance. We have Kino, who's Austin Gen 2 on Instagram, or Tyson, who is uh, Do You Raptor on Instagram. Both guys can help you get the best deal on your off-road parts.